Hey guys, I hope you all have seen most of the videos of coordination compound and you know in the last class we did something called as crystal field theory of tetrahedral complexes which was an application of CFT. Today we'll go deeper into that concept and learning something called as spectrochemical series. Why this is important? Because once you know this concept, you can also talk about the magnetic property of CFT complexes. Okay, so now let's understand the concept in detail in the further lecture. Now, let's start with a spectrochemical series with something called as a sequence, okay? And the sequence is very important. You need to memorize it. Not in the exact series, but you can remember, you know, some trick. Now, let's see what is that. Why you need this is for solving problems of magnetic properties via crystal field theory, okay? Now, have a look. Here, I have written something with, you know, a higher power and a lower power. Now, what does that mean? The one that you see at the extreme left, okay, these are all strong field ligands, okay. I repeat, these are all strong field ligands. For the moment, just remember that all the strong field ligands will have low spin. What does that mean? We'll talk in the further part, okay. Now, next, the other one is weak field ligand and that is going to be a, having a low spin. Now, just remember in the opposite way, okay, strong, okay, strong is going to be low spin okay so strong and low okay higher and lower so you can just remember that way similarly weak and high okay so weak field is going to be high spin clear next have a look at this you will find most most i didn't say all okay most of the neutral ligands okay will have strong fields or will have low spin okay so your carbon monoxide most i said okay so carbon monoxide is neutral ligand okay and the strongest of them all the next one is cn minus yes cn minus is neutral also in one part and this anionic also in one part how because it can donate you know it is an ambient ligand it can donate lone pair or it can donate a negative charge based upon that but since it has overall negative charge it is anionic ligand next ethylene diamine is a neutral ligand ammonia is a neutral ligand edta is anionic but it has higher percentage of neutral character. Why? Because EDDA is hexadented. You know that it can donate four pair of lone pairs and two pair of negative charge. Okay. Next, NCN, that is isocyanate. Now, this is anionic. Water is neutral. Then you have oxalato anionic ligand, hydroxide anionic, fluoride anionic, sulfide anionic, chloride anionic. You have cyanide, thiocyanide, which is anionic okay so re just remember this case okay isocyanide is more stronger compared to the cyanide okay next bromide and iodide okay now see most of your anionic ligands i repeat most of your anionic ligands are weak field ligands okay or they will have a higher spin is this clear so in short in spectrochemical series neutral ligands are more closer towards strong field ligand while anionic ligands are more closer towards weak field ligand now that is all you need to remember why because while solving the numericals it will be much easier you know to solve if you remember this concept rather than just memorizing the whole series okay fine so just try to remember it's not fixed but try to remember that water above they will have low spin or they are strong field ligands okay not exactly but they have high percentage then from water to iodide they are more close towards your high spin or they are more close towards your weak field ligand okay so for time being we'll just take water in the center and try to memorize that like all this whatever the sequence it does not matter you should know it is strong field for solving okay so just remember that this is going to be strong field and this is going to be weak field so you can solve all the magnetic property questions okay so this was your spectrochemical series now let's understand the application of spectrochemical series okay now again we have to go back to cft that is the reason we have covered cft first i have drawn a simple diagram of cft i haven't drawn you know the lower degenerate orbital Fine. So from here, we have the higher energy orbital and then it is getting splitted. Now what happens? Now this splitting, that is between the EG and T2G, I repeat, the gap between the T2G and EG, that is nothing but your delta O. Okay. This depends upon how strong or weak your ligand is. The stronger your ligand, 
the gap between the T2G and EG will be more. The splitting energy, okay, is going to be more. Okay, I repeat. If you have a strong filled ligand, your delta O will be higher. Okay, that is the splitting energy will be higher. Okay, now what does that mean? Now, if you have a higher splitting energy, it means when you start filling electrons as per the Hunt's rule, okay, what will happen? You will have one, two, and three electrons. After that, you have a choice. That is, the fourth electron have two possibilities. Okay, the fourth electron can start pairing your, that is fourth, fifth, sixth, then the seventh electron can go up. Okay, eighth, ninth, and tenth. This is one case how your electron can get filled in your d orbital. Okay, after splitting. The second one is okay. Now let's see. Assume, okay, the other case that is you have one, two, three. The fourth electron, rather than pairing in the T2G, is moving up. Okay, that is you. So you have complete half filled orbitals, and then you again go back to the lower level and then start pairing them up. Okay, so these are two possibilities, two cases that is what I have written. Okay, the P is nothing but the pair pairing energy, what we have done right now. Okay, so there are two types of pairing that is taking place. Either you will have case one or you will have case two. That is what you need to remember, which one, okay, you will get as per the spectrochemical series. Okay, so let's talk about that. Now, when you talk about, okay, the strong fill ligands, okay. Now remember that strong fill ligands have low spin, okay. So they are really stronger and they are having a higher magnetic opposition, okay. So they are moving slowly. So they have they are called as low spin complexes, okay. And that is the reason, sorry, they will form low spin complexes. I know it is bit too much to hear, so I will keep my words less so you understand the concept more. So again, I repeat, depending upon how your pairing pattern goes, you will have two case, okay. Case one. If you have a strong field ligand or a low spin, you will have the case one. That is, the fourth electron will pair up, okay, and then the okay fourth, fifth, sixth electron will pair in the T2G. So T2G is completely filled. Only then you will go to EG, okay, because they have low spin. The gap, the main reason is the delta O value is higher. Okay, and the pairing energy is less. So what is happening? The gap between T2G and EG is much higher. So it is difficult for the electron to jump to the higher energy that is EG. That is the reason the pairing is taking place in T2G. While when you talk about weak field ligand, okay, they have a lot of repulsion, okay, because they are weak field ligand and they are moving with a very high spin or very high speed. So what happens? As soon as you have your half spin like three electrons in this the fourth electron okay is a weak field again with a high spin it will just jump to your eg okay and only your sixth electron will start pairing okay sixth electron onwards you will start get pairing so i repeat in short when you have the energy gap between t2g and eg more you will have pairing from the fourth electron that is all t2g packed but if your delta naught is less, okay, what will happen? You will start pairing the electron sixth onwards. That is sixth electron onwards, you will get your pairing. But no matter what, you are filling the electrons at, as per Hunt's rule or Hunt's rule. Okay. So I hope you remember this. This was application of your spectrochemical series. Now what happened? Now let's say how do I decide it? Let's say I have said that your ligand is ethylene diamine okay and in d orbital let's say you have seven electrons okay so how will your cft look like i repeat i said your ligand is ethylene diamine and you have seven electrons in the d orbital okay then how will your you know splitting of the d orbital look like in octahedral complex so in that case ethylene diamine first you have to question yourself that it is a strong filled ligand because it is a strong fill ligand, you will have six electrons in your T2G, okay, pairing, and the seventh electron will go up. So you will have one unpaired electron. That is what you need to remember. That is how you solve the questions based on the spectrochemical series. 
okay so we will solve some questions in the next class and that is nothing but your magnetic properties so see you soon in the next class thank you